So the first thing that I want to do is uh, I want to talk about the graphs that you drew, that you drew, <laughs> which is I think uh, very cute. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, this is all the people that have handed in uh, your work. Okay. Uh, okay. These are all the people that have handed in the work, uh, And so far, there are only twelve people that have handed in the work, uh. I want to comment about the strange, strange looking graphs. I think in all my life teaching physics, can this is the funniest looking graphs I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, let me tell you which are the correct ones. Huh? Uh, I want to congratulate Vion for getting this correct. This is the correct graph. Number one, huh? for the P against 1 over V graph, okay, uh, Vion has gotten it correct. Okay, so congratulations to you, uh, Vion. Now, why is this correct? Uh? Because this is what we call the best fit graph. Okay, a best fit graph uh, is a straight line graph, okay, that can touch almost every dot, but whichever dot that it doesn't touch uh, must have equal number on each side. So you see on the left side of this line, there's one there's one point that tidak kena potong, tidak kena lukis. And then on the right side, there's another point. So the number of points on the left and the right hand side lah, must be the same number. Or at least lah, only a difference of one. Okay, so we call this a best fit graph. Okay, only if it is a straight graph. Lah. <laughs> okay, only if it is a straight graph. Lah. So congrats, Avion. This is a good job. The rest of you... <laughs> The rest of you, I don't know what is going on through your minds. Okay, so for example, this uh, uh actually it's not just Bernadine lah, okay. Everybody else also has this problem. Okay, number one, uh the scale. Okay, number one, I need to talk about the scale. Uh. Cannot you cannot draw a scale like this, uh. If this is zero and this is 0 0.02, how can this be 0 0.025? Think about it. Uh. Have you ever seen a ruler uh, where the numbers are not you know the numbers are not sakata. How can this be zero? How can the distance from zero to zero point zero two here and then after that zero point zero two to zero point zero two five? Cannot. There, there is a twenty there is a twenty step uh uh leap over here and then suddenly over here to here is a five leap step. Okay, so Bernadine, you will have to change your scale. Huh? Make sure your scale is uh you know sakata, see 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06. 0 0.08, 0 0.1. Okay, these are very important skills. And uh, I feel that, oh, okay, once I've seen the graphs, then I know, oh, okay, this one must be fixed. It must be kena kasih baik ini. So actually, sorry, uh, Bernadine, I'm not I'm not here to embarrass you, lah, but uh, I just want to mention that you're not the only one that did this. <laughs> okay, you're not the only one that did uh, this uh, this mistake. Lah. Okay, quite a number of you uh, okay, also did the same thing. Okay, this zero point zero two, and then that suddenly is zero point zero two five, and then so on and so forth. Okay, and then <clears throat> uh, there were some people. Okay, let me <laughs> let me come back to these two boys here, uh, Ng Chen He and Elvin and Wong. I don't know why you all are praising each other. I love Wong. Wong love me. We are happy family. <laughs> so I don't know what's happening if with these two, but okay. Number one, uh, <laughs> number one, there is no such graph uh, in physics like this one. Okay, this is a mathematics graph. Okay, this is not in physics now. We're not interested in this kind of graph. The graph that looks like you know here is Mount Everest and then here is Mount Kinabalu and then here is Pinampang. The one, uh, okay, I it has to be a smooth line, uh, either you know either straight or you know or a curve, but it must be a smooth one. Okay, not. Not zigzag, 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 Okay, we don't want like this. Lah. Okay, so uh, for this P against V graph, uh, I don't think I've seen anybody with a correct graph. Maybe with the exception of Merrill. Yeah, Merrill's graph is the one that looks the closest to the correct one. Okay, which is a curve graph. Okay, which is a curve graph. So you want to make sure that when you draw the graph, you are aware of the shapes of graph they are. And that's the reason why I asked you to post this on Padlet because on because now if I ask you to post it in Telegram, okay, I'm gonna get all these weird, weird graphs. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get all these weird, weird graphs, and then I have to have to make this correction again. Okay, so we learn as we go along. Okay, this this subtopic has one, two, three, four. There's four graphs that you have to learn how to draw. 
Okay, and every graph, and this, sorry, and this law, Boyle's law, is the graph that has the weirdest, like, you know, like very weird one. Okay, so I want to settle this first because the next two graphs that you're going to draw are similar, okay, are similar, but, um, but they are slightly different than what you are doing now over here in Boyle's law. Okay, so remember, we always hold on uh, to the principle of best fit. And the line that you draw uh, must be a must be a smooth line, not necessarily a straight line. Uh. You look at Merrill's one over here. It is one smooth line. Okay, although it is curved, but it is smooth. It's not like just now the one that I show you from Eng Chen and Wang Yik's one, right? The one that looked like Mount Kinabalu and then Mount Everest and then after that. Okay, zigzag, zigzag. Puya, we, are, we don't have this kind of graph in physics. Okay, we learn this now. Uh, we learn this as we go along. Take note of this. We don't have this kind of graph for physics one. Okay, it's either a smooth curve or a straight line. Okay, but even if you draw a smooth curve or a straight line, take a look at Merrill's points. One, two, three, four yang kena, and only one yang tidak kena. This is what I would call a best fit. Okay, one and then one on this side, and then the other side of the graph here, there's zero. La. Okay, la, can. there's a difference of one. Okay, so Meryl and Viona, good job. Okay, I think you guys are on the right track. Except that, where is Meryl's, where is Meryl's other graph? Huh? Uh, Meryl, I don't know what happened here. <laughs> oh no, okay, sorry. This this graph, huh? okay, this graph is actually supposed to be a straight line. Lah. I guess maybe when you saw it, um, oh, lah, hi, sorry. Uh, I guess maybe when you saw it, you thought it was a curve. But actually, it should be a straight line. Lah. It should be a straight line starting from zero. Okay, because the graph is a directly proportional graph. Okay, which brings me to this. Huh? Okay, which brings me to uh, which brings me to the five types of graph that you all need to know. Okay, the first type of graph is a straight line graph. Okay, and we call this a directly proportional graph. Okay, jot this down, huh, everybody. Okay, directly proportional graph. So that means if let's say if this is, I'm going to call this y and I'm going to call this x axis. La. So the relationship for this now will be y is directly proportional to x. Okay, and it doesn't matter, even if it is, let's say, okay, let's say in the case of Vion's graph, la, p against 1 over v, right? And then, she, and then the graph is actually like this. So when we write the relationship, ma, we write it as p is directly proportional to 1 over v we just write the axis okay don't worry about uh, don't worry about what the axis is la. if the axis is a very funky one la, like 1 over v squared la, then here also you write 1 over v squared doesn't matter okay but the idea is if you see a straight line it and a straight line starting from zero la, okay then it is a directly proportional graph Okay, that's graph number one. Graph number two, okay, is if you get this kind of graph, which was Merrill's graph just now. Okay, again, uh, as I said, uh, it is a smooth line. Okay, not zigzag, zigzag. Okay, there's no such, there's no such thing, no such thing. Okay, cannot. Uh. So it will be a smooth line. But this one, this graph is different because you find that when the V gets bigger, the P gets smaller. Okay, so over here, we call this an inversely proportional graph. Okay, I'm doing this revision because I suspect that a lot of you have forgotten what learning, what you have learned under teacher Fiona. Okay, P is inversely proportional to V. Okay, so again, whatever the axis here, Okay, uh, you know, you just follow the axis. La. Except that if you see this kind of graph, this is an inversely proportional graph. Okay, now the third kind of graph, the third kind of graph is a graph uh, that is like, uh, I think Carlson, you are the one that drew this graph in the, this one. Uh. The third kind of graph is a graph that is like this. It doesn't, it is a straight line graph. Okay, remember directly proportional is a is a is a straight line graph. Sorry, ignore this. This is a straight line graph. Okay, but it starts from zero. But uh, the third kind of graph uh, is a straight line graph that doesn't stop. That doesn't start from zero. It has a, it has what we call an intercept. Okay. 
Now, if you get a graph that has an intercept, nah, okay, we call this okay, we call this a uh, relationship, nah, increasing linearly. Okay, so in the terms of the axis, nah, we will say p is okay, p in way because the p is here, lah. Okay, p is increasing linearly to one over v. Okay, so actually there are five types of graphs altogether, lah, but I want you to cover the first three. First three is if it is a straight line starting from zero, then it is directly proportional. If it is a curve like this, it is inversely proportional. And if it is a straight line that is not starting from zero, like it has a point over here, right? Okay, then it is an increasing, is a linearly increasing uh, graph or increasing linearly. La. Okay, these are the three types of graphs that we will actually see in this chapter. And I want you to know the relationship between uh, all these graphs. And the most important thing uh, is that all the three graphs are a smooth graph. Uh, okay, it is not a zigzag, zigzag. Okay, this is not like a you know, okay, point number one, point number two, point number three. Okay, we follow, follow. No, 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 no such thing. Okay, there's no such thing in physics. Huh? All lines are smooth lines, but it can be a curve or it can be a straight line. Okay, so be very, very careful. I'm Again, huh, I'm using the word smooth. Huh? Okay, smooth, not necessarily straight, but smooth means uh, it can be, you know, a curve as long as, you know, it's just one continuous line. Huh? Okay, so this is a very important thing. Huh? Please, uh, please get this correct. So those of you who haven't handed in your graph for some, for some divine reason or whatever, okay, please, uh, I mean, you have missed your chance, lah, I feel. Okay, the point of the Padlet is so that I can see and I can, I can get a general feel lah, of where your skill level is at, at drawing graphs. So the 12 people that have handed in, okay, good for you. Huh? Okay, it, because if I see that, I know, okay, you need to you need to make uh, corrections with this. The rest of you that didn't hand in, uh, well, what can I do except to express my utter disappointment? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to scold you. Like, it's, not, it's not worth my breath to scold you all for this. Like. Okay, so if you didn't hunt, then I feel that you just lost out. Like. Okay, so those of you that have already uh, hunted, Okay, please make the necessary corrections. Okay, and then hand this graph in into the Telegram homework channel. Okay, when you have finished it. Lah. Okay, the, the Boyle's Law graph. Okay, make the correction. Um, put, oh, let me, sorry. Yeah. Send one picture only. Yeah. One picture means you take one, you take uh, page 109 and then you take a photo of page 110 and then you do a collage. Okay, do a collage and then you send it in as only one photo. Is that okay, everyone? Can? <laughs> Can, huh? Okay. Now, so, 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 let me show you. Huh? This is how the graph should actually look like. Lah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I don't know how Vion did this. Okay, Vion got three line, three dots, right? Okay, but this person over here only managed to touch two. Lah. And even then, also not really touched properly. Look at the scale. Uh, okay, look at the scale that they use. It's very sakata. 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and all those things. Okay, the same thing goes with here. This is very similar to Merrill's graph. Uh, okay, so Merrill, only one point in Tidakana, right? Again, uh, the idea is this. That it must be a smooth line. Okay, so for the graph on the left, uh, this one, the direction, uh, the... The relationship would be P is inversely proportional. Sorry, proportional to V. Okay, manakala this ini is P is directly proportional to one over V. Okay, but the question is this now. Okay, and I usually get this question a lot, sir. How do I know? Uh, if the graph is a directly proportional or a linearly increasing graph. Okay, so let's say, um, how do I know uh, if, how do I know if the graph is supposed to be like this or whether it is like this? Uh, because these two are pretty similar. Uh, 
Okay, so my advice to you will be this lah. You look at the pattern of the you look, you look at the pattern of your points. Okay. If it is a linearly increasing graph like this, uh, with an intercept, right, it will be very obvious to you. Uh, okay, it, they won't give you like a 50-50 situation. So let's say, for example, uh, if let's say all your plots uh, are like this, uh, then you know uh, that definitely this is a linearly increasing graph. Cannot start from zero because it's you know it's literally impossible. Okay, how can this because the pattern, uh, the pattern shows the pattern of the points shows you that it's going to cut at the y-axis somewhere. Okay, but if your points are like this, okay, let's say your points are like this. Oh. Okay, if you see something like this, then you kind of know uh, that it's probably going to be cutting at zero. It's probably going to be a directly proportional graph. So let the points uh, that you plot tell you the pattern because the pattern will tell you what the graph should be like. Okay, especially if this is a if this is a like a you know like a like a real like <laughs> sorry, I was gonna say, like a theoretical experiment. Uh. Usually theoretical experiments the the answers are already given beforehand. Uh. Okay, just like this one. Okay, in real life, okay, in real life, when we do this experiment, uh, we may not be able to get such a chantik punya job. It may not be so chantik. Lah. Okay, but uh, this is chantik enough for us to get, you know, these kind of graphs. Lah. Okay, so let the pattern, uh, let the pattern of the, uh, the pattern of this one tell you, okay, tell you how the graph should be looked like, whether it is a directly proportional graph or whether it is a linearly increasing graph because these two these two graphs are the ones that uh, we very very commonly see okay uh, in, uh, in 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 physics okay now another thing uh, uh, so 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 the first thing that i need all of you to do is number 1 is to make sure that you those of you that have handed in okay thank you uh, thank you for handing it in uh, and so please uh, Sorry, hold on. Uh. Uh, please fix the graphs. Okay, if you need to fix the graphs, okay, you need uh, you can fix it, and then uh, send these two graphs in as one picture, uh, in the Telegram homework channel. Okay, but those of you that haven't handed in, okay, into the Padlet now, uh, and you still want to hand in, uh, you can do so if you want. Okay, but because I've already talked about the this one uh, so I probably won't say much lah. Okay, unless unless you make such a big mistake that I still have to correct it, uh, I probably won't say much. Okay, secondly, uh, please turn to page, please turn to page 112 and, and please ignore this person over here. I don't know what this person is doing. <laughs> okay, please turn to page 112. Uh, I want you to copy down these values. Okay, kamu sambung. Uh, okay, please continue from 70 and then go all the way to 80 and 90 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then uh, get the values of this L. Okay, and then take a look at the instruction uh, that is in page 112. It says, uh, plot a graph of L against theta. So we're talking about L here. Okay, and then theta over here. So this is L, this is theta. So L against theta. Okay, but they say uh, the theta axis has to cover the range of negative 300 to 100 degrees Celsius. So what this means uh, is that you have to draw a graph. Sorry. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, fine. You have to draw a graph okay, where the L is like this. Uh, but the, 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 the theta, okay, the theta axis... Okay, has to cover maximum 100 and then minimum so negative 300. Okay, and and you will know why when you have drawn a graph. Lah. Okay, so for this one, uh, when you draw your graph in page 113, okay, when you draw your graph in page 113, you will probably have to make it into a landscape mode. Okay, because your graph, the x-axis is very panjang. <laughs> okay, so I suggest uh, that instead of answering uh, this way, okay, instead of answering this way, you answer this way instead. So that you can cover the negative 300 all the way to 100 on the other side. Okay, you will understand why when you have already plotted out the graph. Lah. 
Okay. And then on top of that, sorry, today is just like graphs drawing day. Lah, because as I said, I have this rehearsal to go for, which I don't know whether it's still happening or not. Okay. The other one is this one. Okay. Page 115. Uh, okay. So please make this correction. Lah. This actually should be uh, kilopascal, but you can just write it as cm first. Lah. Okay. But uh, I know that in the textbook, sorry, in the textbook, in the table, lah, there is until 80, right? Okay, but unfortunately, I only have this five data. Lah. Okay, so you just plot until 70. Okay, but the graph is, the graph, uh, the axis is still the same. If you take a look at the instruction, uh, they say plot a graph of P against theta. Okay, P against theta, but the theta must cover all the way also from negative 300. Okay, negative 300 until 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so so the second graph, the just now punya graph, uh, which is uh, this graph, okay, is very similar to this graph. Okay, you will have to draw the graphs. Okay, so this graph, uh, you draw on page 116 and also the same thing. You put it uh, horizontally like this. Okay, and then these two graphs, uh, you post it up on another padlet. I'm going to I'm going to post up the I, I will give you the link to the padlet, but you post it up there first. Don't hand it in as a telegram homework because I haven't made the corrections to it. I want to see how you draw the graphs. But remember, okay, remember everybody, in physics there is no such thing as a zigzag graph. Okay, it has to be a smooth straight line trying to cover as many points as you can. Okay, so we call it the best fit graph. Okay, please remember this. So page 108, the mathematical expression now for Boyle's law. Boyle's law states that pressure is uh, inversely proportional to volume. Okay, pressure is inversely proportional to volume or volume is inversely proportional with pressure with the condition uh, that the temperature and the mass of the gas is constant. Okay, so according to uh, Boyle's law, the mathematical uh, expression or the mathematical formula, okay, will be P1V1 equals to P2V2. So we are going to use this formula, okay, to talk about, uh, to talk about a few uh, calculation questions, lah. Okay, so um, this is a very good. Uh, triangle to help us to remember because we're going to learn three laws and all the three laws I have to do with this PV and T. La. So you need to remember that, okay, Boyle's law, uh, temperature is constant. So when you close the T, like this guy does, <laughs> you close the T, you find that it's P times V. The formula is P times V. La. So that means P1V1 equals to P2V2. Okay, in situation one, pressure and volume in situation one is equals to the pressure and volume in uh, situation number two. Okay, so let's take a look at a few questions. Huh? So the first question, a weather balloon is filled with helium gas to a volume of 30 liters. Volume is 30 liters of one atmospheric pressure. Okay, now um, you actually haven't learned this yet like, because this is in form five, but pressure, okay, there are many, many, many different units for pressure. Okay, but uh, the good thing about the gas laws uh, is that the units don't matter uh, until the end of the question. Okay, I'm going to explain why in a little while. Uh. Okay, you just have to make sure that the units you're using, this, you, the units that you're using in the formula is the same unit. Okay, that's why it doesn't matter. You don't have to change it into a standard format. Uh. But only at the end, uh, okay, you need to make sure that you're using the correct unit. Okay, so in this particular question, they are saying that the pressure is this unit, one atmosphere. ATM is atmosphere. Okay, then the balloon is then released. As the balloon rises up to the sky, the volume increases. So what is the pressure of the helium gas when the volume balloon increases to 120 liters? Okay, so we list down. Okay, we know that the formula is P1V1 equals to P2V2. This is situation one because the question gives 30 liters at one atmospheric okay, pressure. So P is one and then V is 30. 
equals to, and then they say here, what is the pressure? So you want to find the second pressure. Lah. Okay, but the volume has increased to 120 liters. Okay, so first of all, notice uh, that in this question, we are using very unconventional units uh, for volume. What is the unit for volume usually? Is centimeter cube, bahkan. okay? But here we're using liters, okay? So that's why I said, uh, the the units don't really matter as long as in the question you are using the same unit. If this is example, uh, if this is thirty centimeter cube, and then suddenly they say here hundred and twenty liters, uh, then we have a very big problem because the unit is not the same. Okay, we have to make sure that the unit is the same if we want to use the three gas laws. <clears throat> okay, so this will give us a value of P equals to 0 0.25 and you use the same unit as the one that is given in the first one. If this is ATM or atmosphere, okay, atmosphere, okay, then over here you also write ATM. Okay, that's why uh, the three gas laws can actually uh, the calculation is very easy because you don't have to worry about the unit so much. Okay, the rule is <laughs> again the rule. The rule is the units don't matter. Uh, the units don't matter as long as you are using the same unit for both situations. Okay, itu adalah benda yang paling penting. Okay, second second question uh. now. Air bubble with volume of 5 cm cube. Okay, so we have to make sure that it's always 5 cm cube. Uh, it's always cm cube. Lah. It's released by an air pump at a depth of 0 0.5 meters. Calculate the volume of the air bubble when it reaches the surface of the water. And then they say the atmospheric pressure is 10 meter water. So here is another pressure. Uh, here is another pressure. A unit okay which we say meter water lah. okay but it tells us uh, that this 0 0.5 meters is also uh, is also a unit for pressure okay actually it's meter water lah. okay let me illustrate this situation to you uh. so you have this water and then uh, 0 0.5 meters below the water okay is this air bubble okay so this is 0 0.5 meters Okay, then the bubble is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, lah, obviously. Lah. Okay, I mean, if you all ever found pee under the water, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Lah. Okay, as the air bubble rises, it's going to get bigger. And over here, uh, over here, there is going to be smaller pressure. Here is bigger pressure. That's why the volume is smaller. Okay, over here is smaller pressure, so the volume is bigger. Okay, so the question is this. At the bottom, here... It is 5 cm cube. But what is the pressure over here? Okay, so we need to understand that at the bottom of the surface, at the bottom of the water, the pressure is equals to the atmospheric pressure plus the depth of the water pressure. So that means in this situation, the first pressure is 10 plus 0 0.5. Because there's the atmospheric pressure, and then you add on top of it uh, is the 0 0.5 meters water pressure. Okay, whereas in this situation, already at the surface, uh, there is no more depth. So that means the pressure over here is only 10 meters water. Okay, the second one is over here. So you have P1, you have V1, you have P2, you can calculate V2. Okay, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to uh, go through this very quickly. Okay, so you when you calculate this, you'll get 5.25 centimeter cube. Okay, if you don't understand this, okay, watch this video again. Okay, the most important thing is we need to understand that the depth of the water actually contributes to uh, pressure. Okay, but when you're on the surface of the water, the only pressure involved is the atmospheric pressure. But inside the water, whatever object that is inside the water experiences water pressure and atmospheric pressure. Both. Okay, they experience both. Okay, third situation. Huh? A small mass of mass is trapped by a 3 cm length of mercury in a small tube as shown in the diagram. The tube is then turned so that it is upright. What is the new length of the trap gas okay so in this situation notice that the atmospheric pressure now 
has changed to another different unit, <laughs> which is 75 uh, cmHg. So 75 cmHg. Okay, so we need to consider this situation. Okay, in this situation, okay, uh, in this situation, the only the this gas over here, okay, is being pushed by only atmospheric pressure. Okay, only atmospheric pressure. Whereas in this situation, this gas over here is being pushed by, obviously it is an open tube, huh? so it is being pushed by atmospheric pressure plus the pressure because of this 3 cm. Okay, because when we put the gas tube this way, it's going, the 3 cm, the mercury uh, is going to go downwards because it is being pulled by gravity. Whereas in this case, the 3 cm is not going to do anything because the 3 cm is being pulled this way. So it's not going to push against this gas. Okay, whereas in this case, it's going to push against the gas because it's being pulled down by gravity. So over here, the pressure becomes bigger. It will be pressure of atmosphere plus the pressure because of the, plus another 3 cm. Okay, so over here, pressure is only 76. But over here, the pressure is 76 plus 3. Okay, over here, the volume is 10 cm. Okay, I know, I know, I know that volume is centimeter cube, right? But as I said just now, okay, in Boyle's law, Charles' law, and pressure law, we only use the representations. Okay as long as they are the same. So if I want to know how long this is, I use the same formula, okay, to find the, this one. Okay, we find V2. So in the first situation, the pressure is only 75. But in the second situation, okay, which is this, the pressure now is including the pressure because of the mercury. So there's 75 plus another 3, okay. This 10 over here, we used to represent uh, the first volume and then we use uh, Boyle's law to find the volume of this second one. So in this case, because of the added pressure in 3cm, the volume has decreased okay, to 9.6. All right. Right, one last question. Uh. Sorry, I'm rushing because I have to go. <laughs> okay, in this case, also the same thing. Uh. You have figure A shows a J-shaped uh, contains six centimeter cube of air trapped by mercury. Okay. Now, figure B shows more mercury is being poured in. So we add some more mercury inside, and then you know there is an additional hundred and fifty. Okay. So what is the volume of the trapped air, uh, inside over here? Okay. So let's consider this. Uh, when it is when it is uh same balance like this, right? Okay. So that means what is happening here is that only the atmospheric pressure okay only atmospheric pressure is acting on this side so that is p1 but because we add another 150 over here so you're going to have the 75 centimeter from uh from atmospheric pressure add together with the 150 from the mercury so the second one is 75 plus 150 Okay. In this first situation, the volume is 6 cm cube. So you can use Boyle's law to find the second situation, okay, which you will get as 2 cm cube. Okay. Now the thing about this, uh, the thing the, the thing about this is that it suddenly becomes difficult uh, because number one, there are concepts about atmospheric pressure that you have actually learned a little bit when you were doing science last time. But you didn't learn, you will not learn it uh, actually until chapter five, uh, chapter two in form five. Okay, in chapter two in form five, we will talk a lot more about atmospheric pressure. Lah. Okay, but um, in case, lah, okay, in case like you don't really understand what is happening, okay, I suggest that you wait for this video to come out, okay, and then you re watch this part again. Okay, try to listen carefully to what I'm saying and see if you can understand why the pressure works the way it is. But again, now, as I said before, you just need to make sure that P1 and P2 are using the same unit, no matter what the unit is. Okay? And then V1 and V2 are using the same unit. 
Okay, we don't, it does not necessarily have to be a standard international unit. Okay, if V1 use liter, V2 also we use liter. Okay, if P1 we use uh, centimeter Hg, then P2 also we use centimeter Hg. If P1 we use uh, meter water, like say in this case, okay, if P1 we use meter water, P2 also we use meter water. Because pressure, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are six units of pressure. <laughs> there are six possible units of pressure. Okay, it can be Pascal, it can be centimeter Hg, it can be meter water, it can be uh, millibar. Okay, there are many, many, many units for pressure. Okay, even the pressure that you find in a gas station also has a different unit. Okay, you go and see lah. Okay, you it's different. We don't they don't even use meter water or cm hg. Okay, so we have to be a little bit flexy lah. Okay, we have to be a little bit flexy about the unit of uh the unit of uh pressure. Uh, today, I just wanted to discuss the calculation question since I had the time. Uh, but the most important thing is fix your graph and hand it into the Telegram homework channel. And then the other two graphs that I asked you to draw today, upload those into the Padlet. Okay, because I still want to see and I see, I want to see if you know if you make any mistakes or if there is a correction needed. Okay, all right. Thanks everyone. Have a good weekend. I will see you all in the next class. Huh? Okay, take care.